Welcome to Better Sex, where you get the information and inspiration to create and enjoy your best possible sex life. Join your host, sex therapist Jessa Zimmerman, as she brings you expert guests, helpful tips, knowledge, and strategies to improve your intimate relationships. And now, your host, Jessa Zimmerman. Hey, welcome back to the Better Sex Podcast. This is Jessa, and thank you for tuning in. So glad you're here. Every week, I have these fascinating conversations with people, and sometimes they're people that I seek out and reach out to, or people I already know. And sometimes, like today, there are people that reach out to me who have something to offer around, you know, some topic related to sex. And some of them are pretty surprising. Like, it wouldn't have occurred to me (laughs) to to talk about this or to talk to this person. And those are some of the most interesting interviews that I have. This is one of those. O'Day Dixon reached out to me because she is a dancer. She's been a nurse. And she is seriously into the science and the thought behind flow state, which, you know, it sort of came out of research into people that are highly successful and thriving, and they have some things in common. They get into the state of flow. And as she describes in the interview, it is something that is sort of uh, self-rewarding. Like it feels so good to get in a flow state. You're not aware of time. You're not aware of yourself. You're certainly not aware of worry. You're in a different brain state and you're, you're at peak performance. And this overlaps a little bit with sex. Not that we have to be peak performing in sex or that we're, we're looking for some experience that's, you know, mystical or unachievable or something like that. But the parts of flow that we could relate to about not being self conscious and not about, about being present in the moment not really aware of time, you know, the, the place we can get to really is, is, is accessible to all of us. And so she's here talking about using dance specifically to access flow state. She talks about her own experience, but also how this is accessible for everybody. I hope you enjoy it. And before we start the show today, It is sponsored by Intimacy with Ease. It's a method to help otherwise happy couples achieve a sex life that is easy and fun for both of them. So you can actually just enjoy your sex life with zero stress. For more information, if you want to watch a brief little training video that's available, all of that, go to intimacywithease.com. Okay, thank you so much for being on the show. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is this is a new one. I mean, I, I, I get so many different kinds of topics and so many different guests, but you know, this is fascinating, this whole idea of dancing related to sex. And, uh, Absolutely. <laughs> and it's funny because I just worked with clients who, who took a dancing lesson and had this huge experience around their relationship based on that. So I know it's a powerful thing. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so would you start by just, you know, uh, go back a little bit, tell the listeners a little bit about who you are and how you started dancing and, you know, why why the passion around this? Okay. So um, like Jessa just introduced me, my name is Ode Dixon and um, I have been dancing quite a while since I was a little girl, around the age of uh, five or six growing up in rural West Africa. And um, in our little village, dance was pretty much about the only thing we had. There were abs- there were definitely no computers. There, <laughs> right. were, there were no TVs even. So hmm. the only way we, uh, you know, uh, entertained ourselves were we formed little groups and we would gather together in uh, somebody's compound and we would just practice and dance. And um, this usually would lead to the holiday period where we would perform along the streets 
and it's kind of like 12 days of Christmas performance. Like we didn't necessarily nail it down, but it was around the holiday period and we would just dance around that time and we would dance al- along the streets. People would stop to watch us. It kind of reminds me of those parades you see at Disney Disney uh, Land uh, mm. when you go there and they like parade through the streets. It was kind of sort of like that. We would just uh, make several stops at different points we'll put out our show and then we'll keep it moving uh-huh. so yeah so that's that's kind of uh where it dates back to mm-hmm. and um that was kind of like a highlight of my <laughs> life growing up. <laughs> right right yeah. <laughs> so when when did you become aware of like a state of flow like you know because your dancing is just a little girl when did you start to realize there's some deeper experience going on so while all that was going on, this is kind of like, okay, we did this for like uh, entertainment, fun and everything. However, dance was very, almost like everywhere. Church, it was a lot of dancing. And I was in a, uh, our, the, our church had like a, a choir, a, a, a children's section, and I was in the children's choir. So we did performances and dances. So it was there. It was always there. So, however, there was this um, movement that had just started in that uh, church community where I was, and it was um, like an evangelical group where we would go out, and it was a dance ministry. So we would hold these um, evangelical crusades where we, uh, the mission of, of that group was to like go out and, and spread the word, but really it was dancing and preaching like wrapped together. So as we are doing this, we would go out as a group. Uh, it was my, like my entire family and, uh, this group as an association, uh, we would go out, uh, into like villages and we're spending like two, three days and we're doing this thing, just dancing and, and doing this fellowship. And it was so phenomenal that we didn't even leave this spot, but people would just come to us. So the mission of that group was, hey, um, spread the word and convert people to like um, Christianity, which was a religion that was just picking up at that time. So people would just come in droves. They were just mesmerized by the way we would put up these performances that, by the way, we didn't practice them. It was just like <laughs> improv okay and it was just this magical way of we would dance and somebody would make a move and you just look to that brother over there and you just pick it up and it was just so magnificent people would come around us and they're just like wanting to be amongst us so later on I couldn't quite put my hand on it but that was when I started realizing Something happens when we are in that environment. It was a little kind of mystical. Couldn't explain it exactly. It was later on, though, when I like got introduced into the field of flow, and I was actually studying it as a subject. They, you know, one of the exercises was go back to like a childhood, a time when you experienced these things. And for me, it was immediate because mm. I could just relate. It was the sense of they call it when you become one with the activity you the dance the music the environment you all become one there is no separation it was a oneness Mm. of 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 it was an experience that you couldn't explain where you become one with everything it was just magical so that's where i started first that was the first time i experienced flow and i i would experience it in that environment but then uh, when I learned when I learned later on about flow, which we will talk about a little bit more, you know, as I um, I continue to learn about the topic, I realized that it showed up at places where, you know, um, it, it has evolved from just mystical or spiritual to all phases of life. But at the same time, it's where at that point where you are performing at your optimal and it's 
free flowing. And that's why the term flow was coined because it's just so flowy. You are not, um, it's a very, very satisfied state of being where you are just performing at your best, you know, yeah, not, and not overthinking or not worrying over- or analyzing. Okay. Yeah. So, exactly. you know, so when I listen to you talk about this and of course I'm thinking about sex and my clients <laughs> <laughs> and thinking, you know, I mean, I hate to, I don't want to make goals or aspirations that people feel like they can't live up to, but it seems like right. some state of flow around mm-hmm. sex where you can just be in the moment you're reacting to what you feel. Well, um, so absolutely. So, um, I would, let me, um, let me share this quote with you so that you will, your audience kind of understand how, what else, how does Darcy will get into this? I'm, I'm sure you will, you know, will lead on to it, but this quote here by, um, uh, Ned Hallowell, who is a Harvard psychologist and an expert. He, he is the, um, leading expert in ADHD and, and, uh, you know, that field, but he approaches it with flow, uh, treatment and everything. He researches flow and develop concepts and treatments around it. And this is what he said. He said, flow naturally catapults you to a level you are not naturally in. Flow naturally catapults a weakling into a Muslim, a sketcher into an artist, a dancer into a ballerina, an ordinary person into an extraordinary person. Everything you do, you do better in flow from baking chocolate cake to planning a vacation to solving a difficult equation to making love. Everything you do, you do better in flow. And then he goes on to say, flow is the doorway to the more most of us seek. Hmm. Rather than telling ourselves to get used to it, that's all there is. Instead, learn how to enter into flow. There you will find in mannerable doses all the more you need. Hmm. I thought that was powerful for us to share here for the audience to know that the more that we're seeking in many aspects of life can be, we can get it easily if we just learn the mechanism of how to get there, one of which is flow. You know, it's accessible yeah. to, to all of us. Yeah. So you do think it's accessible. It doesn't seem like this um, aspirational thing that people can only sort of, you know, see from the ground or something. You think people no, can no. learn to get into flow? No. So what, what, one thing that has happened over so many years, and um, I come from the back end of just like um, – looking the research like i'm very very interested in the the research the the studies of it so it's not just speculation right Mm -hmm. so one of the ways to look at this is to like go back and i like uh, how stephen cutler who is one of the stephen cutler he's one of the leading experts and researcher of of uh flow site uh flows and he goes he, what he did was kind of like take us back into, you know, like a chronological evolution of what this phenomenon is, which way back when, 150 years ago, it used to be just um, like a mystical experience reserved for the spiritual and um, religious uh, uh, um, um ran alone and that was how it was taught to be that the flow was just reserved for that that um uh, body of work but then more and more uh philosophers and uh, came up to like disprove that later it was um abraham maslow that came back later and what he did abraham maslow is a a, you know, a phenomenon um, in in the world of psychology. But what what right. he came, he was interested in knowing what people who are at their top, at their their peak, people who excel at any field. He wanted to study what was going on with them, successful people, and that's what he wanted to know. Um, you know, all of the successful people at that time. So he researched them. He, he, he talked to them. He tried to understand what is going on. 
each and every one of them is describing this thing that was supposedly um, just reserved for mystical, spiritual mm. experiences. And then come to find out that all these people that he's talking to, every last one of them was an atheist. They were not. Right, so there, there's a secular flow, exactly. <laughs> right? Like so, this is, yeah. so, so okay, this can This is not just for. This is not just for uh, religion or spiritual. Uh, no, this is this is accessible to everybody. This is right. the same thing that we are looking at here. So that kind of like blew the door wide open. That okay, this phenomenon, which is flow, which is re- at that time was referred to as peak performance or peak experiences is not really accessible to everybody and it is available to all of us if we if we knew what how to get it and how to get into the state so that was kind of like a little eye opening to say well you don't necessarily this is not just for religion or for spiritual purposes is available to to all of us and mm-hmm. there have studies of, you know, across the board from art, science, um, business, and all fields from Olympic gold medalists, all across the board, people who are performing at their peak because of the uh, flow experience that they are having. Right, you know? right. Yeah. So the point is, yes, it is. Um, is 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 for every one of us in every situation, including our sex life, if that's where we are trying to, um, um, you know, improve our lives and right. have that experience there. Mm-hmm. All right. So talk to me about the overlap here with dance because you okay. uh, you obviously grew up experiencing flow in this dance. Yeah. So tradition and experiences right. that you have. Is is this something you recommend across the board? Like, what is it about dance that might help people discover flow? Yeah. So, um, like I mentioned, uh, you know, dance was very, very present in my earlier life. But then when I came to the U.S., you know, for a long time, I wasn't dancing regularly beyond just like occasional events. You know, I wasn't quite um doing it as regularly as I was. I mm-hmm. was really caught up in the everyday, you know, running around and just living life on a very uh, <laughs> hyper side of it. Yeah. So um, something happened. I had uh, a school. I was running in um, a vocational school where I would uh, train um, and certify um, healthcare professionals. And it was quite it, it was quite hectic. I was just going, going, going. And then um, very suddenly my sister died in um, Africa mm. and uh, it was very sudden. She wasn't sick. She just suffered a massive heart attack and she just dropped. It, we, I spoke to her like three days prior. She was supposed to come over to visit with us and we were in that process and boom, she was gone. Oh, wow. And it was such a devastating time for me. And um, went home for her funeral, had time to you know spend time with family and everything. And when I came back, I was beginning to question like the whole way I was living life on the go, go, go. I wasn't happy after all because what happened was I left bedside nursing to start my school in search of freedom, to live a more relaxed life. But apparently that's not what I'm getting and I'm still going at it. (laughs) And I was just like, oh my God, my sister just died. And it wasn't, it was about a month or two after I came back from my sister's uh, funeral. I was teaching a class one evening. We were practicing how to do um, blood pressure. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was teaching the students. So this one day, this one evening, the, one of them didn't have a partner. So I decided to be a partner with one of them. She checks my uh, bl- uh, blood pressure. It was sky hi oh my I gosh couldn't, i couldn't i couldn't believe i'm like oh what is i'm like no i wasn't denied i'm like okay yeah, it so must be the student stuff. right yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah you don't know what you're doing come on do it again that's not what i taught you and of course i'm blaming everybody else we did that thing like three times switch students switched equipment sky high wow. and I, 
like, what in the world? So um, confirmed that I was hypertensive a few days later with my doctor, and it was a devastating blow. I just buried my sister who dropped dead from um, uh, a massive heart attack from actually untreated high blood pressure. Oh and gosh. it was like, whoa. You know, my babies were very, very little. And I was like, I had to stop and think of what to do, um, yeah. make some changes immediately. Long story short, though, um, I started dancing again because I wasn't being, I wasn't active at the time. I made so many changes, of course, my diet and physical activity. So dance, dance was, uh, what I took up. I was doing dance classes, but this, the schedule getting to the classes was too hectic. I decided I will dance at home. Like I can dance. I don't need to, you know, stress myself trying to get to those dance classes. They were amazing, but I just wasn't getting there efficiently. So I'm like, okay, I'll just start dancing at home. So I started dancing at home, started dancing at home. Uh, it was all of a sudden this same experience that I used to have back way back when that I told you about when I belonged to that evangelical group, it would just be like something transcendent. My body, it would just take over me and I'm just going and going. I kind of started experiencing it again. And um, that was right around the time I had stumbled into flow science and I started learning about it. And there came the connection. You know, I was dancing. I was feeling a sense of self, a sense of relaxation. And it was absolutely transforming. Hey, it's Jess. I'm just taking a little break to invite you to my free monthly webinars that I do on a variety of topics that always include an open Q&A session with me at the end. I'm doing these monthly. If you want to hear about them, be invited so you can register. Make sure you join my mailing list. You can go to bettersexpodcast.com slash list. By the way, 11 months after I started making all these changes, by the way, I was taking off blood pressure medicine. My blood pressure was not only controlled. It was getting too low. And they took me off blood pressure medicine. The doctor was like, well, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm dancing a lot. (laughs) He's like, okay, well, keep going. (laughs) So so, um, besides that, everything was changing. My physical appearance was changing we were looking to move to uh florida at the time because my husband was uh, nearing his retirement and we knew we were going to come to florida and um we were searching so uh we had about two weeks to visit a part of florida that we were looking at (laughs) and i'm like oh my goodness i have to do some beachside photos while we're, in, um, uh, while we're in Florida, because we live in Atlanta, beaches are like four hours away. Right. So I'm like, oh, while we're in Florida, I might as well do some photos by the beach. And then I looked at myself, though. I was like, okay, that, that is not a bikini <laughs> beach body. You got to do something. <laughs> so then I, I really, really started dancing very, very regularly. And the physical results were outstanding Jessa you would Mm -hmm. not believe it for the first time I had abs like my husband is literally watching me dance one day and he goes sweet pea you got abs and I'm like (laughs) I see (laughs) is there anything um I mean I'm 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 thinking that some of this would be related to sort of any form of exercise or fitness yeah some of the benefits it wouldn't you know specifically Right, right. So right. that's what I'm. So that's that's exactly it. So this type of dance that I was do, do, doing called makosa is very. Um, it's a type of belly dance, but think about belly dancing. But the the um, emphasis is let's just say three to five x more of the normal belly dancing that you see. So mm. makosa is a very popular dance around. Uh, 
West Africa, and it's when you are, they call it wind. It's also wind, or in the Caribbean, it's called wind. You are winding your waist, and it's a core exercise like no other. But the thing mm-hmm. is, you are having fun. You don't even feel like you, you're not doing crunches or right. anything that makes you like, oh, I don't want to do this. This is fun. Like you are 20 minutes in and you don't even feel like you've done anything, you know? So yes, it's the uh, benefit of that. But to come to where it relates to the sex part of it is that I realized that between me and Julius, it was phenomenal. That was another, yet another benefit. It was Mm. just a lot more easier for us. It was just a a thing of, it was just a transformational. And what I came to learn, uh, the more I learned about flow, was the fact that when we are moving our bodies, we are triggering the neural pathway in our brain, you know, so our brain has a way of releasing uh, neurochemicals in the right. gene. So um, neurochemicals are triggered in our bodies when we move. First of all, nitric oxide, which is a gas, it's, it's a gas that we don't when we don't realize, but it's indigenously released, and what it does is it flushes out stress hormones like cortisol and norepinephrine, it flushes it out of your system. And then on the other end, it triggers the release of these feel-good neurochemicals like um, uh, dopamine and oxytocin and all those things that really spark these joyful and loving feeling inside of you. Not only feel good, but also enhance your performance. So right. these are sort of flow chemicals, right? These exactly. are part of what you're experiencing. Exactly. Yes, yeah. exactly. They, um, some, they, they call it dose. Some, play, some uh, people, um, experts just call it dose for people to remember. So D for dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, uh, and niandonine. Those are some of the common ones that are triggered internally. And what happens is that the brain has the perfect way to cocktail these drugs inside our bodies that there is no way we can do that in real life. So Hmm. most of these indigenous drugs, there are real life drugs, morphine and all those things in real life that mimic the exact uh, feelings that we can get. But the thing is that they are cocktailed perfectly by the brain there is no way we can replicate that right so so yeah so these drugs the the way we are feeling are triggered by just moving our bodies a certain way and um it's not just every type of um practice that can give you this type of feeling you know Mm -hmm. so there are the, the way the brain talk to talk to us. You know, if you want to look into the brain, the way researchers look into the brain, they want to know where. So the neuro anatomy, where exactly in the brain is this information taking place, and what pathway? So the network, where is it connecting to? And then the electrical charge. What kind of electrical charge is being released, and what kind of chemicals is being released? You know. So there, those are some things that are happening when you are moving your body in a certain way with dance. And with with dance, these are the types of chemicals that are triggered in our body. First of all, you calm down by just flushing out those um, stress hormones and then release these um, neurochemicals that elevate the way you feel so that when you get into the activity you want to do, it's flowy. It's not stressful. It's yeah. enjoyable, you know? And then something else you also have to pay, uh, we pay attention to, which I'm also more, more, mostly interested in is, so where in the brain is this action taking place? So that's the neuroanatomy. So in order for you to dance, and if you are really, really paying attention, and what the researchers have done is they compare different scenarios where flow can be taking place. So they look, they look at uh, meditation. They look at things like 
you know, surfing, they look at runner's height, these things that really spark flow and mm-hmm. what exactly is going on in the brain. Well, when it's a relaxing, when it's a mindful activity, something like, say, meditation, in meditation, you are letting, I think, you are letting go of your feelings. You, you want to control your feelings or something like that. So uh, certain parts of the brain, are not going to be activated. You're going to, you're going to just um, go through that feeling. Well, when it's something active like dance and you have to pay attention to, let's say you are making a certain move and you really want to dance and pay attention, the, the activity that you are doing, such as dance, is going to draw your attention to the now. So they call it focusing in the now. Yeah. yeah. The, the ability to be in the present where you are using a lot of your senses, you got to pay attention through it, you know? So it's not, it's not like rumination or, or daydreaming, you right, know? Right. This is something that, okay, I really have to pay attention. I really got to go through this process. So you are forced to focus. When you are doing this, there is a part of your brain that kind of, shuts down because the brain is known to conserve energy. You know, it works this, it doesn't it, it wants to conserve energy so that it pays attention to what's happening right now. And um they call this uh, they call there's something they call um transient hypofrontality, which is when you uh at this moment so transient your your prefrontal con- uh, cortex, which is, which is the frontality, is hypo, so it's it's dialed back down so that you can pay attention. You know, so that's important to note because um, you can benefit from an activity like, let's say, uh, meditation on one side, but it's important to also balance it with an activity that really, really forces you to like be active yeah. and. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm trying to say that there is a balance and both of them are really beneficial and why you should really um, emphasize on doing something like that that will spark these types of activities in the brain as well as the chemicals that really can enhance our sex life uh, later. Right. And well, the other thing that strikes me about dance is if you are dancing with a partner, Mm-hmm. Whether it's a particular type of dance that you do with a partner, or if you're just paying attention to each other, mm-hmm. you know, there's a tuning in and an awareness to each other that I would imagine would increase flow. I can kind of between you. you, right? <laughs> oh yes, I can tell you. Like it sounds like TMI, but my husband can just watch me dance sometimes, or even when we're not dancing together. He can just watch me dance. I love to dance, so it doesn't mm-hmm. bother me at all. But he can just yeah, he, 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 that's something that, that's right. definitely a thing. <laughs> so tell yeah. me to, to, to sort of wrap up, right. What, what would you say to people? Cause I'm sure listeners are thinking this, I can't dance. <laughs> dance is somehow not for me, right? Oh, like I've, I've, I've got two left feet, whatever I it is. Know, I know. So for that, I will say that the joy of dance, actually, first of all, um, I know I mentioned earlier about the uh, how one of the uh, Stephen Cutler gave us like a chronology uh, of how this whole flow thing evolved. Well, one of the most researched flow godfathers, the way he puts it is that flow is intrinsically motivating, which means when you are doing the thing, the action, Mm. no action it is not for you are not calculating you are not you're not being calculated like okay i'm doing this so that i can get rewarded with this no you are just doing it for the sake of doing it so you Mm. enjoy the activity regardless so for the listeners i'm saying dance don't worry about it it's not competition it's not <laughs> it's not anything that you know you are being judged on this is just you just dancing for the sake of dancing so i use um i i just tell people like let loose let loose go into it enjoy enjoy yourself don't no self critic and that's actually one of the benefits of transient hypofrontality because 
when your prefrontal cortex is dialed back, you can no longer calculate your sense of self, which is a good thing at this time because you're not being judgmental. You're not judging yourself. You're not criticizing yourself because we are very perfect. at like very self-critic, right? We criticize ourselves. Oh, I can do this. I can do that. Well, one of the benefits of dancing or doing an activity like that is that that part of the brain where sense of self is calculated is dialed back a great deal mm. so you are not cal- you're, yeah, yeah that's the same area where time is calculated so you're not too too aware of time you're not so self-conscious those right. things are dialed back so that you just go through the motion and the more you do it and it's it's crazy the yeah. more you the better you get. It's just like any other thing, directedness. If you get into it, get into it. Get, the more you do it, the better and better you become. You become at it. So Great. I would say, tell them, go just put on the music, whatever it is, <laughs> like, and go for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. So where, where can people get in touch with you, learn a little bit more about you? Yeah, so um, the followers, they can check, they can uh, get in touch with me on, you know, social media, like I'm um, Ode Dixon on Facebook and Ode Dixon One on Instagram. Those are the two platforms where I'm really active. And, okay. Uh, and that's where I share up and coming uh, things that I'm working on. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for this conversation. A total different direction for me uh, on the podcast, and I think it's great. So I love it. Thank you so much for having me. You are welcome. All right. Have a great day. You've been listening to Better Sex. Please visit our website, bettersexpodcast.com, for show notes and additional episodes. And that's a wrap for today. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. If you are enjoying the podcast, if some of this material resonates with you and you would like to make a difference and make sure that this keeps coming out in the world once a week, ongoing, there are a couple things you could do to show your appreciation. The first would be to go to iTunes and rate and review the show. That really helps us be found by new listeners when you review the show on iTunes. You can find a link at bettersexpodcast.com slash iTunes. The other thing I want to invite you to consider is becoming a Patreon. For a small monthly pledge, you get some benefits. So for $2 a month, you get advanced access to every single episode. For $5 a month, you get a chapter of my upcoming new book. And for $10 a month, I host quarterly get to know you and question and answer chats over the web and you get invited to that. I would love to have your membership in that become part of the better sex family. You can find a link at better sex podcast.com slash Patreon, which is P A T R E O N. Again, thanks for listening. I'm glad you're here. Feel free to comment, ask questions, get in touch. I'd love to hear from listeners. Thanks. Thanks.